This is the Tip Top Podcast, the T-I-P-P-T-O-P-P podcast, hosted by myself, Keaton Ditchfield, and we talk about everything to do with the outdoors. That's fishing, camping, hunting, birds, wildlife, conservation, and a whole lot more. This podcast is as raw, untamed, unedited, and unapologetic as nature. So buckle up. This is the Tip Top Podcast. Um, so for those who awesome. don't know, this is Stefan Olkers. Did I pronounce that right? right. Yes. That's yes. Perfect. And <laughs> he is the owner-operator of Lift Carp, which is an awesome YouTube, Facebook channel that he creates awesome videos. If you haven't seen them yet, make sure to go there, like and follow his pages because he's got some awesome, awesome copy content on there. So make sure to do that. And thank you for joining us, Stefan, even if it is just your pretty voice. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Okay, so... Words there. Oh, no, they're well deserved. You make kick-ass <laughs> videos, bro. So... Thanks, man. Tell us, what got you started in specimen? Yo, so I have the mm, normal story like everyone else started with Bob Hoy. Yeah. The whole club fishing, club comps, got fed up with 500 gram carp the whole time. Yeah. And then about four years ago, I would say, we started putting in one rod for specimen. And that usually ended up being a size 08 Daiichi with a massive tiger nut on it. An just 08. with the hair. Yes, the 08 Pop Hoi <laughs> rig. Okay. And with just a piece of mono, put a hair on. And that's how, how we started. Okay. And it worked. Caught, caught quite a few carp up to like four or five kilos. And then one of my friends went to Monroe, you might know him, his carp lift. Yes. He went to, to Brackpan and saw someone fishing with little white balls and <laughs> catching quite a few carp. So we were confused, like, what was that? And then he tried it. We'd, so once again with the 08 rig, 08 hook, and caught a few. And from there, we thought, okay, now we're going to properly do it. And after catching my first 10 kilo carp from homestead on a homemade boilie, it was just done. <laughs> a homemade boilie, that's there, pretty cool. Yes. Huh? Yeah, it was, it was a chocolate homemade boilie or something. And did you hand roll it? Yes. Yes, I they did. must have taken forever. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, but oh, luckily, I'm going to make my own boilies. And, <laughs> and then they sit there for three <laughs> hours going, oh, my God. Yeah, I know. It's, it's painstaking if you don't have a table. I'm being phoned by George Beer. <laughs> Why is he phoning me now? Sorry about that. Come on. I can't put my phone on airplane mode. Stefan, let's quickly try um, reconnect. What if I go Rick? live and you join me? But then everyone can't. They're not going to see me. Are they? Can they see no, you they on your don't. channel? Yeah, if they... If, Let's try yes. that. Let's try that. on my channel. Let's try it. Okay, so Stefan's going to yeah. go live and then I'm going to join his his thing. Hello, can you hey. see me? Yes. Oh, thank God. Yeah, that was <laughs> such a pain in the ass. I don't know, I had to restart the app. I just flipped that. took oh. fucking eight. Sorry, bad word. Bloody ages. At least we got that now. Yes, and we've got 33, <laughs> 32 people watching. Thank you for those who have stayed. Oh, thanks. Thank you. You guys are legends. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so back at it. So what made, what made I you... I like your lighting there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what got you to go from a new specimen angler? Well, not new when you started. Mm. But what made you go from a specimen angler, like a normal specimen guy, to someone who started their own channel? What made you go and take your cameras with you and create your awesome content? Okay, so videos was something I always liked. So like a lot of people, I started with slideshows. Okay, Just yeah. a bunch of pictures, some music in the back. Yes. I have to say, these days, I don't like that at all. Me neither. <laughs> a doof, 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 and there's a picture. Yeah. Then it goes. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> out. And then... I started making a few Bob Hoy videos, actually. No idea where they are, though. And I just wanted to, to make videos and just, just to document it. And then I realized that that is a very good tool to get other companies to actually 
recognize you. Yeah. And then I that I still have the original photo there from about three years ago and that I took of a specimen SA bait before I actually fished for them. Yeah. And yeah, from there, started filming um, just constantly trying to improve from the previous video. That's flipping cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> I did the same thing when I started because when I started, I was also, I was really cuck. I don't know if you guys can see. I did the first video I did by myself. It was 15 minutes long and it was bass fishing, but shit, it was boring. Oh. Yes, it was a boring yeah. video. And then <laughs> after that, I wanted to, because fishing was expensive and fishing is expensive, as we all know. Definitely. And I wanted to start, I wanted to fish for free. I wanted to have the stuff that I needed for fishing to be sponsored. And the only way to do that is to create a following. Mm. So for all those guys who ask, how do you get sponsors? How do you get what, what? You get a following. You get people to follow you and watch your, watch your content, whatever it is, your pictures, your videos, whatever. And then that puts attention onto you and attention is currency. So what, what hmm. do you, you, you agree, eh, Steph? Yeah, definitely. That's probably one of the questions I get asked the most is how do I get sponsored? Yeah. And so my, like, like I tell to everyone, the, the first biggest thing is don't expect stuff for free because you're not going to get it for free. And choose a brand that you would fish even though they didn't sponsor you. Yeah. So you first need to have confidence in the company that you want to someday fish for because otherwise you're just false advertising. Yeah. And then with that company, take photos of your sessions, take photos of the stuff that you use, send them the photos as well. Because if they see it, they know they need to look out for you and continuously see your stuff. Yeah. And they see you confident in their stuff so they know that you would be a good choice. Yeah. And that's all that you do as a tester or ambassador at the end of the day is promote a product so that other people would want to buy it. Yes. So if you need to add value to the company in order for them to want to sponsor you or use you to help promote their products. Yeah, I I agree 100%. There's, because I've, I've got quite a few sponsors and I've talked to all of the guys, the big guys who bring the stuff in the into the country. They've always had mm. problems with sponsoring guys and then the guys give them nothing for it. And I think, that's exactly. the biggest, I think that's the biggest thing for guys who want to get sponsored and all that stuff. You must under-promise and over-deliver. So, and yeah, don't be scared to be work, work for free because... Your content in the beginning is not worth anything. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Your content's <laughs> worth fuck all because it's once that you've created that following, once you've taken years. We've been doing this for how long now? I've been going for like three, four years. No, how many years um, you've been going? Four same? years about. Yeah. So it, over four years. It's, a, it's a long slog. So you've got to put in the work before you're worth anything. But once you've put in that free work that, like, like Stefan said, your 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 pictures and stuff, your great content that you've given them for free, they actually start appreciating you and seeing and start taking you seriously. Then then it might be worth their time to actually give you something because they know they're going to get stuff for it instead of expecting Definitely. stuff for free, which yes. a lot of guys are like, no, I'm a good fisherman. I expect stuff for free. <laughs> no one follow you, follows you. No one cares that you've caught yeah. a 20 kilo carp. It's, it's the long run that people care about. So if for all those young guys that want to get into – sponsored angling and stuff like that you got to you got to it's a long haul you got to work hard you got to develop your skills keep getting better and no don't forget why you do fishing why you make content it's because you love Definitely. this sport it's not about no, I mean I still don't get stuff for free yeah it's it's <laughs> it's tough you got to hustle you got to work hard yeah. and, and Stefan works bloody hard if you haven't seen his videos you must see it he works that video you, that you watch what how long was your last one the one at Aqua how long was that? Uh, that was my first over 10 minute video. First over 10 minute video. So he made an over 10 yeah, minute video ever. and it took him two days to shoot. And then how many hours uh, in the editing studio? <laughs> yeah, that was probably another two days. Yeah, so two days of filming, it. two days of editing just for a 10 minute clip. So just to put it in perspective for those guys who want to, <laughs> oh, making a video is easy. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it's also something that you don't get paid for anything. So it's you have to enjoy it, actually. Yeah. Because I have a lot of people telling me, no, I could do it if I can just take the videos. 
it's not just about taking the video. It's you have to edit it and put a time into it. Yeah. And enjoy it. Otherwise, it's going to be a slip to do it. Yeah, and editing is not. It's not. It's not a, a glamorous thing. You literally sit behind a screen for hours on end, focusing it's the on, worst these, part of it. on the on these little little <laughs> things. Watch it again, little things. And they say, do you yeah, like you can your look own in the videos? background. Huh? Yeah, there. You look can at look all in those the background. There's Premiere Pro going. <laughs> There's another tip. For By the way, this is start. this is a going. video coming out next week. Next week, guys, tune in to Lift Cop. Yes. What is it? Are we allowed to know what it is? It is a session I did at Clip Copy oh, where yeah. I landed my new PB. That's it's an the, epic video then. It's the it's the one where uh of the fish that's on the cover of the Corp Angle at the moment. Oh epic. It's that video. Okay, yes. so we'll make I'll, sure I'll release to... it tomorrow. Okay, that's exciting. So guys, everyone tune in to Lift Cop. He's gonna post that video soon and we can all watch him catch a monster carp that is on a magazine. That's flipping cool. Yes, and I appreciate all the support, everyone. Yeah, guys, just also make sure to like his page and subscribe. It makes, and if you like the videos, it makes a huge difference because YouTube will actually put it out to people who want to watch content and for the content creators, it really helps us. So, yeah, with yes, that said. <laughs> so, um, where does where does the ideas for your videos come from? Like, do you get inspired by something, or you just film where you go? Last year, I would say, well, yeah, last year I would say it was more of I need to catch something big or have some adventure to try and make a video. But this year, I decided I'm going to try and make a video of every session. Now with with fishing overnight sessions, it's quite difficult because you, I'm always in a hurry getting there just before the light goes down. And that's usually bite time. So then filming is a bit difficult, but this year I'm going to try and, and focus myself on that. And at the end of the day, I also try and show something that, that I think I would have wanted to see. So I would want to watch it Yeah. before I just make some boring video. Yeah, that makes sense. Because filming stuff is filming stuff. If you've got to have like a, <laughs> you've got to have a plan and you've got to have an action because otherwise yes. you just got so much content that all is just a bit of a waste, I guess. That's what I'm asking. Do, do you shoot to a shot list? It depends on what it is. Um, I'm like you because every Cause session I've, I go I've never on, done that. Haven't you? It helps. It never. helps a lot. If you're doing um, a set shoot, so if you're going fishing and stuff, you can have a basic, set, like, from, what can I say you can? What I do is I get a basic shot list, kind of, when I do use mm. it, where I go, okay, I've got to get an establishing couple of glamour glamour shots, couple of this, intro, outro. I've got to tick those boxes. But around that, I'm quite creative. But when I do, um, like, my sponsored reviews and stuff like that, then yes. the sponsor has paid me to do a review. Now, guys, I'm being honest here. I get paid for reviews sometimes. But... If I don't like that product, I refuse to do a review on it and I give them back their money. So that's how mm. I work. So I'm honest with my reviews. And if I don't like a product, I'm not going to take someone's money and bad mouth them. I'll just give them their stuff back. There has been um, companies that have actually recalled products and taken them back, sent them back and said, oh, really? we don't want it. Yeah, there's, a, there's an alarm system back in the day that just, I was just <laughs> like, I'm not doing it. And then... The sponsor was like, "Well, if I'm not gonna, if it's if it, if you think it's cuck, I'm not gonna sell it to guys." So then, nice. took it away. Yeah, See, that, and that, that kept your integrity. Yeah. So when I do the the paid videos, I I have to produce something that is good for the guys who paid for it, and then I make a shot mm. list of because the the product has got certain features, so I've got to highlight those features. So say for example, the buckets that I did back in the day. The buckets have got metal handles, they've got this, it's got a camo finish, so I need shots of those things. Because when yes. I talk about it, the guys want to see it. They don't want to just <laughs> hear me talk cut Just look it. at your face. Yeah, so oh. yeah, that's when I work off a shot list. But um, it'll, it'll help me in the future if I work off more shot lists because I'm, I'm ADD, hey? I'm like, I must do this. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, look, a bird. <laughs> so I, I stuff up like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I'll try that this year, but... <laughs> yeah, you also get carried away with fishing. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, end up... Like, I have one of my... Actual, my, I think it was my first video for Specimen Essay. Yeah. I took the whole B-roll sequence after I caught the fish. 
and then worked it into in front of the before I actually caught the fish so it looks like a story yeah. but instead I just ended up not shooting before I caught it and I was like hey now I can shoot something yeah guys don't so. like blank videos <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. fine if it's if you're making you're making a story you're telling the truth you're not making up cuck you're not like it's tough for guys to to understand that sometimes you shoot things that are not in order because mm. sometimes getting a fish is very important for you and you just have to focus on your fishing because filming takes so long. So you've got to catch that fish. Yes. And once you've caught that fish, you're like, okay, cool, I've got a video. Now I can tell the story of what happened. So I can, I don't exactly. know, reset up your bivy or re put out your chair. Or <laughs> <laughs> do all that extra, yeah, extra stuff that, that helps tell the story, I guess. Yes. Okay, so... Oh, but it's, it's difficult. To yeah. get all, all the shots sometimes. Yeah, it especially is. Especially alone. Yeah, it's, it's tough for me That's yourself, eh? Watching, you do a whole <laughs> sequence, talk for five minutes, and then the whole thing is out of focus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my camera here is, doesn't have a flip screen. Mine neither. My new one doesn't so, have either. <laughs> you put it there, but like, guess if I'm going to be there. And it also doesn't have follow focus, so it doesn't focus on me when I move. Oh. So I need to get to the exact spot. Or else it's and a very focused tree. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> eh. But I, yeah, what I do sometimes is I put something in where I'm going to be. And I focus on that, then walk around. Yes. And then I'll manual like focus. Something. Yeah. Yes, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's tricky sometimes, but it's, it's worth the effort once, once it happens, I think. Mm, definitely. So what made you come up with Lift Cop? The name? Uh... <laughs> so at the time I was very into into the gym so with weights and everything lifting so I came up with lifting I want to do it something fishing related but also gym related okay and then the picture I always had in my mind was of like being ripped and holding a cop I was like ah, okay lift cop that's quite cool that's <laughs> Uh, the idea came from unfortunately the cop came but the old gains never came <laughs> me too bro don't worry <laughs> uh, that's cool sure, well, that's, that's quite cool. that's quite a cool image i thought it was lifting a cop out of the water so yeah that, that could see maybe the good thing is that it's it's open to interpretation oh yeah no it's a, i think I it's a bang in there. <laughs> okay so but if yeah. i could choose now sorry interrupting you there no no go for it if i could choose now I would I would have kept my name my name and surname. Like that cop angle or something like that. Okay. Of having a secondary name. So that you are directly connected to what you do instead of it being like a second page where you don't where, where viewers don't know if there's someone else. Oh gotcha. That's also running behind the scenes. So okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm, my name used to be It's Tip Top Fishing with Keaton Ditchfield. But I took it off. Yes. Ugh, just it's tipped up fishing. Yeah, long. <laughs> so what nice. what rods and reels do you what rods, reels and line do you use at the moment for those who for the listeners who want to know? Uh, at the moment I'm using the dwarf ES Nash rods. So that is the the entry level of the Nash range. My reels are Shimano XDBs and my line is well, on yeah, my line at the moment is Braid. It is the Jackal Touchdown. Okay. But if I was fishing mono, I probably would fish uh, Double X. Or if I had the opportunity to, without the lockdown, I would probably get myself an Ash Bullet Mono. Okay. And is that why? Why? Why that no. one? What's nice about that? One? From what I, I, I can't speak out of personal experience, but from the reviews, it is. A much more abrasive resistant mono okay so when you're fishing in snaggier areas your line will last a bit longer than fishing one of your standard lines from the shop yeah and you do quite a lot of park lakes and stuff which have got quite a lot of snags in them eh? Mm. yeah lots of pads and things mm. and tree branches yeah those park lakes are sometimes those they're very easy sometimes they yes they're like an yeah the enigma yeah, some some of them are difficult, eh? yeah man it's so frustrating <laughs> when you see them all day, every day, and they just don't come out. 
But yeah, especially I, like I don't understand why we can't get them to feed top water at all of these park lakes. Like the only place that I like, if I want to fish top water, I go to Ridgeflay, the Ridgeflay Zoo Farm. Yeah, can't fish. There That's and <laughs> Lone Hill, Lone Hill Dam is also quite nice with the top top water if you can get away from the damn ducks. <laughs> I haven't been there. Yeah, you must come. One day we must do a top water session there. It's, when there's yes. not too yeah, much. Yes, there's, there's an idea. Yeah, let's do it. Because when there's not too much weeds, oh, it's so lacquer. But I don't know what it is like okay. now because they usually got a, a, a laborer there who constantly pulls out the weed because some asshole back in the day put their, their um, fish tank weed in there. And so okay. it just did so good. Because it gets Oof. sun all day and it just covers the whole place. It looks like an astro astro oh, sometimes. Wow. But posh place to catch some top water fish. <laughs> we'll we have must, to try some of that. Yeah, we must try. We must go. To, I've never done it at um, at fun fishing yet, so we must okay. do some top water no, stuff. Dude, like you'll catch a lot of fish top water there if it's on. So you can't wait. <laughs> in an hour, you probably catch like five. Really? Yeah. If you if you in the afternoon time, you can really catch a lot of carp there. Let's do they're, it. They're not massive, but they're good to catch. Then Some maybe fun. maybe what we should do is a uh, overnight session at the pond, but then yes. pull out the lines for for the late afternoon, and we can go clap a couple of top water, save the blank. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good, man. Yeah, that's sick. That's a plan. Let's do it. Okay, so I've got another question for you. Yes. Uh, what are your top three rigs and why? Top three rigs yeah. is because of a bottom, bottom bait or snowman, I would use a fluorocarbon blowback rig. Uh, just simply because the, the fluorocarbon is almost invisible in the water. Yeah, and I used that that straight through, so I don't have a supple section. Okay. Simply because I saw on the quarter on the water videos how effective the D rig was, so I do believe that with the with, with the stiffness of the hook, it always it always catches. Okay. Rather than it having a hinge, so if the fish blows it, it can blow the hinge out. Okay. So I believe that's more difficult to blow out, and my. Wafter presentation would be a slip D rig with also with the IQD and then my D section would be the, the supple braid. Okay. And my pop up rig is my version of the hinge stiff hinge stiff rig, which I can show in a in a video sometime. Yes, that's quite cool. Lacquer. It's, it's almost the difference between Mark Pitches' rig and Elliot Gray's rig. Okay, I don't know who Elliot Gray is, but I know what? Mark. I the know Mark Pitches. Huh? The the guy from Corda. He now makes topography videos. Oh. You must check out one or two other films. Okay. They're very good. The the guy who left. Yes. Okay. That's Elliot Gray. Okay, I know who he is. <laughs> I wasn't that I wasn't that familiar with his name. Damn, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, man. That uh, I'm not gonna. I was gonna ask you tell us a story about your PB, but I'd rather people go and watch the video because that's gonna yes. be epic. It'll be up next week. Okay, so um, as a beginner, do you suggest people make or buy their rigs? If you if you're not confident in it, then I would suggest to buy it. But it, but my best thing would be watch. A couple of YouTube tutorials, like I know, you have quite a quite a few nice videos showing people how to tie different rigs. I would say you rather use that and then learn from the beginning how to tie them, so that you are confident in it. And it's so much of a better feeling to catch it on your own rigs compared to a board rig. So have, there, there's lots of videos and articles. So it must have been the same with your um, with your homemade boilie as well. Yes, definitely. Like they ate definitely. your bait. <laughs> Exactly. You feel so good about it. Like, oh, look how clever I am. I can design baits now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I also, I also suggest people buy. If you, I think 
if you've got one rod, I think you should buy a rig. But if you've got mm. two rods, I'd say buy one that you know works and you're confident in. And then the second one, try tie your own one. Try Find something that's nice and simple and tie that. And then from there, if you start catching fish, you start to know it works. Then you can find your own yes. personal style, personal way of fishing. Because like you said, it, it feels better when they catch something that, that you made. It's like, oh, yes. I'm a clever. I'm a cleverer angler. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so how? Because you're a, you. I'd say you're pretty a park a park lake uh, expert in my opinion. You you're a park <laughs> lake dude. How would you approach a new park lake? So say you've heard about a park lake from your friend, and you're going there for the first time. What would you do to try and ensure that you catch fish? Okay, my first thing would be the margins. So if you just take a landing net pole, just feel in the margins, you'll usually feel it's a lot harder. Like I find it's at, at most park lakes, like 90% of them. It's hard against against your your bank because I feel the, the fish always grab around against those areas and actually eat the, the salt out of those areas. So I would always try and target the with one rod my margin and then another rod out towards open water and i would always use pva mesh bag or a solid bag why is because that? i believe park lakes the, the fish are used to seeing mealy bombs because let's let's face it there's a lot more pop wares and all of them fish a mealy bomb after a while they bring it out so the fish are used to seeing like a small patch of bait on yes. one spot so if you present something similar with a lot more traction, because pellets with a bit of liquid or powders in there is a lot more attractive than just some a bit of Maze, ground, yeah. grounded corn. So, and so I would I would always use that, and I feel they are a lot more likely to pick up that small bit of bait than compared to just a, a single hook bait with some boilers around it. And then that so you target the margins because you feel like the carp mm. are usually around the margins i agree with that yes. um then you said one towards open water Do, is there a certain thing that you use or um, a method that you use to target that open water spot or do you just cast out in front uh just cast out in front if i don't see if there's if there's no features okay if there is an island or something i would always 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 cost as close as I can towards that island. Try and get your rig against it because that's usually where they hide underneath from all other anglers. Yeah. And it would usually be a solid bag. I find that they, they, they not only, like you said, they hide from other anglers, but I also think the carp often eat the, what falls down from the birds. So like Definitely. mommy bird is feeding baby bird and some of that food falls, they eat that, they eat the bird poo, they eat... All of that stuff as well. So, I think that I think the bird, the islands are quite islands and overhanging trees are quite a good spot. Yes, definitely. And if you get your hands on a deeper, try that out. Try and find some, yeah. some features. Those deepers will really help. You'll see. You'll think there's nothing there, and then that de you run a deeper over a certain thing, and someone has thrown in a mm. trolley or something, <laughs> and you find that spot, yes. and the fish are sitting right next to that trolley, and then you start picking up fish. Definitely. So what are the three bits of kit that you cannot leave the house without? The three things that if you if you had to throw away everything, what would it be those three things that you kept? Okay, so I'm, I'm not I'm not, not going to keep it to like of the obvious like rods and rigs and things. Uh, does this does this is this season dependent? At whatever, right now. If you had to uh, grab okay. three things right that now, you feel like you can't do without, what would it be? Uh, it would be, yo, this is difficult. I've never thought about this. <laughs> I'm putting on the hard <laughs> questions now. <laughs> uh, I would definitely say, I would take some pellets, micro pellets. Yeah. To feed with. Um, a couple of different colored pop-ups, definitely. And the last thing... I would say is the camera and the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if it didn't happen on camera, it didn't exist. 
Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'd say for me. Yeah, Cape Town copper deeper. Say again. See it there. Yeah, I see there. Cape Town copper said a deeper. Yes, I always take that with if I don't know the venue. Yeah, <laughs> those deepers <laughs> help a lot. I'm serious, guys. Those Definitely. deepers. People say that people like to talk shit about them, which is which is weird because people don't <laughs> talk shit about fish finders on boats and stuff. Fish finders on big boats. Oh. Huh? Yeah, like like you said, people have no problem with fish finders on a boat, but they have a problem with the deeper. Yeah, it's it's just like let's <laughs> lay on them, and it's like it's quite a clever little piece of kit, and it's I think it's helped me fish and find fish quite mm. quite quite often. Like people say, when I did, I've done two sessions at Reef Play, and I haven't blanked for either of them. And people say, yes. how did you? I've blanked so many times, and all I did was I I chucked out the deeper, found the edge of the weed the underlying weed not the top wood not the stuff you yes. can see put my rig along there and then picked up fish definitely if it if anything helps me catch more fish then i'll use it yeah me too anything but a spear <laughs> no, i don't really care <laughs> yeah <laughs> Quite cape town angus uh, cape town carpus is drones <laughs> those things will get you in more cuck than than they were sometimes <laughs> okay so um what is a park lake? For those who don't know what a park lake is, it is a type of a type of body of water that's usually smaller that is inside a park. So like Emerentia Dam is, I would say, a big park lake. Usually they're small. Um, mm. Like Lone Hill Dam, if you guys go on your Google Maps right now and look up Lone Hill Dam, they, it, you'll see that that's a park lake. It's usually a small body of water with mostly a high density of fish and um, it's frequented by people who feed ducks and dogs and oh. those kind of things that you that are really, really, really basic. Uh, really, really, um, what did I say? Basic. Because I'm, I'm, I'm talking and reading at the same time. So someone said basic and I wanted to say great. So there's Grasic. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Then, okay, so this is quite a cool question that, I, that someone sent hmm. a while ago and it's 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 a quite a tricky question because I think a lot of people would answer it differently. So this is not okay. this is not a not not the three it's not the three things question. Don't worry. <laughs> um, how does one actively target bigger fish? So it was asked by someone who said, "I I keep on catching small fish. How and I'm trying specimen. How do you catch bigger fish?" My first opinion would be fish somewhere that has big fish. So if if I'm going to a park lake, yeah. a big fish is four kilos. Yeah, four, four kilos is a kilos. big fish for me in a park. But if I go to Homestead and I catch a four kilo, or if I go to Club Corp and I catch a four kilo, I'm like, oh, it's a four kilo. But always happy about it, always take a picture. Um, but so if, if you go to a place that has big fish, I would say... Try and find out what bait the the bigger fish have come on. So at Homestead, I know it's usually boilies, usually fishy type boilies. So that's what I would use. I would use a fishy type boilie. Yeah. And go to a wild water, use particles. But at the end of the day, you just have to work through them. Yeah. I mean, last year, I caught, last year winter, I caught 40, 42 carp. And I uh, only caught one that was over 12 kilos. Sure. Right? So you, uh, over 13 kilos. Yeah, so you really got to weed mind. through them. <laughs> Say again? The best thing is just work through them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I personally think that if you keep on catching small fish, most of the time it's your location. Um, mm. And that's location as in the dam that you're fishing in. Because... Carp have got a, what I've seen, carp have got a, a competitive feeding thing that goes on. So mm. if you look at places, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm talking more to the people right now because I'm not, I'm, no, I know you probably know that. So don't, don't feel like I'm talking at you because <laughs> you're the same as me. Um, I always so, like learning, listening to new things. So for, for carp, they've got this competitive feeding thing. So basically, 
usually what you find is in waters that have got a higher population, a higher number of carp, the carp tend to be a little bit smaller or quite a lot smaller because they are competing mm. with food. They don't get as much food in per year, so they grow less. That's also got to do with genetics and sometimes stuff like that. Like if you look at the Vol, the Vol River, you'll see tons and tons and tons of small fish and you really, really struggle to catch that big older fish. But if you go to a place like uh, Bersig, Laurentia, Klipkulpis, for example, the population, the, densi the, popula ugh, the population density is a hell of a lot lower. Therefore, there's a lot less competition for food, which means those individual carp eat a lot more and then they grow faster to, and they grow to their potential. So the first thing I would yes. say for those who want to catch bigger fish, change venues. Sometimes venues are tricky to get into, like you'll find um, some are syndicates, some have um, very intense rules that you have to, um, that you have to abide by. I know Laurentia is extremely strict with their rules, um, which is, it's just part of the things and sometimes you just gotta have the kit to qualify for these venues. But other venues, I'd say like Ritflay, you can catch big carp at Ritflay, um, but it's just harder to get them. And you've got to do, like Stefan said, you've actually got to weed through the smaller fish. You've got to find the areas where the fish are. Once you start catching fish, all the carp are there. You just got to be lucky enough to pick up the big one and the big one's got to be on your bait. So it's, you've, got to have, you've got to have a specimen rig firstly, I think, because specimen rigs help you catch bigger fish. But mm -hmm. a two kilo carp will still pick up a 20 mil boilie. They've, their mouths are big enough so they'll, they'll put it in their mouths. And, and small baits still catch big fish. I've seen 15, 16 kilo fish caught on baits that are that big. So mm. you don't have to always upsize. If you're trying not to catch little fish on purpose, I'd also lengthen your hair a little bit. Um, just by, I'd say, another five mils, lengthen it longer than you would usually have it. And I've seen guys like, you know, David, that legendary angler who doesn't care where he fishes. He fishes in the most dangerous spot ever. Gunshots oh, yeah. going over Maybe. his head. But he fishes <laughs> those things. And apparently, I haven't seen it personally, but apparently his hairs are like that long. They're three, four okay. centimeters long. And then he catches some massive, I think he caught a 50, kilo, a 50 pound, um, what's it? Grass carp. Grassy. Yeah. Yes, I saw that. It's a flipping <laughs> huge fish, but that's what he uses. He uses longer hairs, and that's how some people target big fish, in my, from what I know. No. Okay, so uh, what advice are you going to give? We've already talked about what advice you would give to people I wanting see, uh, to be sponsored. Yeah. What editing program I use, I see as a question from Corpa Maralees. Yeah. Uh, I use Premiere Pro. I do as well. Room 12, I think. It is a very, very expensive program, but it's what <laughs> all of the best use. If you, yeah. if you do want to do it professionally, I'd say get that app. Um, there are yeah. some other, other things that are not perfect, um, other apps that aren't great. But, and then also, if you're going to use Adobe, the, you're, you're going to have to have a good computer. It's very heavy oh. on the systems. And... Rather buy a fast CPU than a fast graphics card because it uses the CPU for those who want to know. What do you Yeah, it think? takes me four hours to export a 10 minute video. Just, bro, I've, no, I've, I've just, because I do it as my dish field productions, I do it professionally now. I've upgraded my computer and now, thank God, because my old one, oh. I used to go press export and do something else for the day. Because <laughs> it, yes. it just takes bloody no, forever. I'm, I can't even open 4K files <laughs> like on Premiere Pro. It doesn't play them. Uh, that's a pain. <laughs> Dropping you on a quarter of the quality and it still doesn't play. No. Okay, so what do you think is the best to use at the Vol Dam or River? Asked by... Millibom and Diegis. Millibom and? Diegis. Millibom and Doe. And Doe. Yeah, yeah, if you want to catch... You go cop, to the Vol Dam, yeah, that's great fun. You catch, try catch as many species as you can. Yeah, like I've uh, I've tried a few times. At the end of the day, you're gonna catch the the same quality of fish on parkway that you're gonna catch on specimen type. Yeah. Um, approach because there's just too many fish in there. Yeah, 
that's a perfect example of high population yeah. density, low big fish numbers. And what I'd say, yeah. in my opinion, I'd say fish tiger nuts and bigger tiger nuts. And then like, you know, those extra large ones that are like two centimeters big. And then I'd say make a cluster bait with them. I've got a video on my YouTube channel. It's where you tie quite a few of them together and you make a bait about that big and then make the hair slightly longer. It, it might work, but I, I still can't guarantee you a two kilo barbel <laughs> will come and pick up the whole bloody thing because their mouths yeah. are flipping big for such a small fish. Um, so, uh, MP Ches, Chesire. I'm looking at the same comment. <laughs> says, Aqua Paradiso rules are hectic as well. So you fished at mm. Aqua, hey? Yes. So what, what were the rules like and how was it like fishing there? Okay, so there's three pages of rules. Wow. So I can't really put them now, but... The, the reason for the hectic rules is because there's so many snags in there. Yeah. That, they actually like, pulled out trees. There's hundreds of trees there. There's, there. there's still a bunch of them that they're busy taking out. So they, they need to be strict with what you use. Yeah. Gotta because if you're going to lose a carp, that, that carp can die if it's if it gets caught up in, in those snags and it can't get rid of the of your line. That's why they, the rules are there for your safety and for the fisher's safety. Okay. Then of the Yeah, and if I who but made up those rules? It, it was it was Gilbert, eh? Who made the rules? Yes. Yeah, and if yeah. anyone knows what they're talking about in terms of carp fishing, it's Gilbert. <laughs> Definitely. Like, that that guy will school everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what is it like fishing there? Did you feel safe? Did you feel? Because I know there's 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 squatter camps and stuff down there of it, but you said in your video there was like fences and all that kind of stuff. It's like all. It's, it's like. <laughs> almost across the road but there's there's massive walls with barbed wire and everything around it there's uh security on the venue there's two two security there, there's one access control gate that you need to get into and one gate that you open with with remote okay so safety i'm definitely not, not worried about safety there and they they haven't had any problems so okay so if you've had if you feel safe there with your cameras i've from what I've heard, I'd be safe there with my cameras. And if we're willing to bring yeah. with our cameras, it should be quite quite safe. Um, yeah, and what, definitely. What okay, but then again, I'll take my cameras to Homestead as well. No, then you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never been to Homestead. I've just heard things. Dude, I've, I, I've, we've slept. Like, I've been there alone, only person next to the lake, and I sleep just on the bed chair under the stars with no bivy. Bro, you're braver than me. <laughs> no, that's hectic. Okay, well, it's, a, it's it's the same as Florida Lake. I've to so take my cameras there, slept outside on at the flat side because it's safe. There's always people there, no problems. If you say so. <laughs> 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 okay, if you say so. And um, what's the biggest fish that you know of at Aqua? Uh, there's there's it's a seventeen. 17 common, and I think it's a 16 mirror. Sure. That are the biggest. But I've heard from a few guys, including, including Gilbert, say they have seen fish up to 60 pounds. Okay, so there's big buggers in there. So, and they've yeah, got so many definitely. koi that are quite fun to target. Yes. Um, I, saw, I saw one or two of them in the margins. There's a question going, what kind of dough can you, and can you buy it? Yes, you can buy that dough. It's, it's, it's a little... Dough, but you can also make it. There's a couple of videos on how to make it. It's just, it's like a sweet flavored dough that you can put on your hook so that your hook is more attractive to bite, for the cop to bite. I'm just checking through your questions now. Is Aqua safe? So, yes. Um, yes. Homestead, homestead is safe. Um, very safe, says Migzy BB Ball 7. Um, tips at Barca. Tips at Barca. Have you yeah, I need Barca? them as well. Oh, I've been there twice and I've blanked twice. <laughs> that's my. I haven't even seen place. anyone catch. A, I haven't seen someone take a fish out of the water there before. Is it? And they, but you've seen them because they jump all the time. <laughs> yeah. No. The the ones I heard them jump the night other time there was not one fish jumping, at all. Really. <laughs> you went there on a weird <laughs> occasion because they've got some. They've I got didn't see one fish jump or one fish show like 
water moving or anything. Really? They heard you were there, so they were like, no, bugger this. <laughs> <Lift cops here." laughs> okay, tips, tips of Bersig from my side. It's one of my favorite venues. When I say it's my place, I mean, it's not my actual place. It's just the place where <laughs> I love to go. Um, tips for Bersig. I would say the more camouflage you can make your rig, the better. Um, the water is very clear and the fish can see your stuff. Um, I'd say go away from obvious hook baits like bright pop-ups and bright stuff. From my experience, some other guys have caught on it. I don't use bright stuff. Be as subtle as you can. Use a little bit of bait and make sure the carp cannot see your line, cannot see your hook, cannot see anything, and then wait. And if you can, um, back lead as well. Remember to back lead in the middle of the dam as well because the dam does this. And if you back lead here, the line does this, but then it goes across the bottom of the dam. So mm -hmm. back lead in the middle as well, get that line down. And don't be scared of fishing closer to you because everyone fishes the other side. Everyone does, and the carp know that. So with Bersig, it it's got on the opposite bank, it does a slow slope, and then where it, where it gets to the, the bottom, that little joint mm. is a nice spot. Um, I did have a deeper video that I filmed, and I, I mapped out the entire Bersig dam, and I was going to give it to you all, and then my laptop crashed, and it died. Oh. Gone. So... Yeah, I'll have to do one of those, Shucks. but yeah, I'd say do that and wafters are good. Wafters, match the hatch wafters, be as subtle as you can. Those fish are big, they can see, and a lot of them are like 30, 40 years old, so they're not idiots. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe we should do a video there. Yeah. Try and get my of course. Yeah, let's get, you <laughs> let's get you going. And yeah, guys, go contact Tace. He's a wonderful guy. He's very accommodating and... It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful place that if you can go during the week after the lockdown, I bet I think it'll be packed. But if you can go during the week, a lot of the time you have the entire dam to yourself. So that's no. it's quite also another another tip because on weekends I know it's hard for guys to get out. Then there's six swims filled by twelve anglers and there's just so much line pressure that it's tough. Oh, also try if you are going to fish the opposite bank, do the washing line method. Washing line method, what's that? There's a video on my YouTube channel where I describe <laughs> it. Um, yes, very good video. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, so go live with Darren. Y'all should go live with Darren. That's a good idea. He is, he's, that guy is a genius. Yeah, that, yeah Dude, he's done well at Barrowson. He does well everywhere. He's one of those guys. He, him and Brandon Maynard, are the two anglers where you're like, I'm going to copy everything they do. I'm going to, fish in the same spot, same everything, same bait, and they will catch 10 fish and you're blank. <laughs> they are, I don't know, there's yeah, something depends. something in their heads that just understand fish. They are really amazing. Okay, so how do you target, uh, Brian says, how do you target koi or are you just lucky if you catch? You can target koi on it, in my opinion, Stefan, I don't know what your opinion is, but I think you can target mm -hmm. koi on the top. If you, if you are, if there are, koi that come up and eat bread and stuff on the top you can target them by pulling your rig away from the other carp and letting the koi eat otherwise i think it's just luck what do you think stefan yeah definitely i think if, if you want to catch a particular koi the best thing would be to try try and stalk it like you said with some bread on the top or in the edge but i've one of one of my park legs has a five kilo koi in and i haven't seen it and i haven't caught it so <laughs> Yeah, those, I, I'm not the best guy to give advice on that, but I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's more down to luck. <laughs> Killian says, <laughs> Darren catches fish in potholes. <laughs> yes, he nice. does. He catches carp in the sea. Um, <laughs> we, we, uh, what's it? Do you prefer match the hatch at Bersach? Yes, I do. Um, looking for hey boy, sorry, I'm late. Was cooking for the family. No problem. Um, yeah, guys, if you got any other questions, I'm going to run uh, Stefan through some popcorn questions. So if you guys have got any questions, please ask now. These are popcorn questions, so you must answer them quickly, Stefan. Are you ready? Okay. Let's go. Okay. So, Bivy or Broly? Bivy. Rather, rather catch a barbel or a bass? Bass. Milo or hot chocolate? Hot chocolate. 
Me too. Hilux <laughs> or Ford Ranger? Hilux. I'm going to see half the people going, what? Fords are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then last one, I think I know the answer. Long range fishing or margin fishing? Depends on where the fish are. <laughs> that's, that's difficult. But if I have to choose, I'd say margins. Because it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. And stalking for carp on the bottom or bread fishing on the top? Mm. I've only recently got into stalking, like f- from aqua. Like after fishing at aqua, I'm definitely going to get myself a ticket and do that. But from, from the top is definitely very exciting. So yeah. I'd have to choose from the top. Then give, <laughs> when you can see a carp going for your bait and then going off, like, you know, here's your bait and they go, Yes. yes, it gives me heart palpitations. It's not <laughs> fair. It is not no, my, fair. My worst thing at fun fishing was using a big bolt, so it's a, a, a bolt machine, and then your bread. But then they keep hitting the bolt machine. Try and <laughs> take that, and they leave the bread out. Just put hooks on the <laughs> bolt machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's annoying when they do that. And when, and when they grab the floaty or the or the bolt machine or something like that, that's obviously not food. And you think, how stupid mm. are these fish? But then you think, I've spent two <laughs> days fishing here and I haven't caught these stupid fish. So yeah. what, what am I doing wrong if they're going to bite a bloody bolt rig? <laughs> like a bolt, uh, what's it called, that bolt? Bolt machine. Bolt machine. Okay, yeah. so here's another question. Bre- bread for sure, feeling when you... Send- okay, six foot and bread. Okay, no, that's not a question. Um, okay, cool. And then what would you say, is, what do you prefer? Do you prefer a beak point or do you prefer a straight point hook? Pop-ups, I would prefer uh, a straight point. On bottom bait, I would prefer a beak point. Okay. I'm the same. But at the end of the day, that's really bad. No, I, I, I'm the, the same. The, the, my only reason for the for the beak point on the on the bottom is because the beak point, because it has a little bit of an intern, it's less likely to get damaged on the bottom of the lake bed. And that's the, the, the only reason. That's my thoughts as well. And your favorite, <laughs> your favorite hook and why? Favorite hook at the moment is the Fang Twister from Nash because it's strong, caught fish in it. I've no problems with it, but if I... For floater fishing or small dams fishing, I would have to say that mm, the floater claw, because it's a, a thinner wire gauge, so it goes in a lot easier. Okay. So they get hooked faster. And it floats more, because it yes, weighs less. because it's thinner. Yes. I'd say my favorite is a quarter Kamakura wide gape size four. That's my... Okay. Yeah, those, those things are sharp, eh? Yeah, I, I like sharp hooks, and <laughs> when... When I saw them, I was like, finally, they're bringing out a hook for us because I feel like hooks, you can't use that often. If you're going to use, mm. keep straightening, uh, keep sharpening a hook, the, the point of it gets so short that it's just, it's less effective. Mm. And I, I'm one do for... You, do you sharpen your hooks? Yeah, I do. And for those who want nice. to know, how do I sharpen it? With a file first and then with one of those nail files. <laughs> Yeah, those nail files that the girls use to file their nails and to buff their nails. Yeah, I can get yes. a mean point with that. And then I then oh, nice. for those who don't know, when you finished sharpening your hook, if you sharpen your hook, make sure to cover that point with some some type of substance that mm. stops the hook from rusting because the hook will rust. And then yeah, I it, use a permanent marker. Yeah, permanent marker works. I use Vaseline, which gives me funny looks on the bank. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people think that I think I'm in all kinds of up to all kinds of things um what do you okay so we've got a question from Etienne uh what do you fill your PVA bags with and I think you said it earlier so any type of of, of micro pellets my what I have at the moment is uh what's it it's betaine pellets from specimen SA and scope of squid pellets from from Nash, and then I put some fish meal and krill meal together with it. Yes, that's quite a concoction of stuff, eh? The fish is spoiled. <laughs> give it as give it as much attraction as possible, and then I'll dip it in some sweet corn or something as well. I'd I'd like to fill it with 
um, whatever bait I'm using at the time. So um, say I'm using a little boilie on the end, I'm going to fill it with crushed mm. boilies or um, what I also like is uh, it's called Protein Solutions. They've got a little protein thing that they make it out of um, black soldier flies. That's quite nice. Yes. But I think, yeah, I'd like to match the hatch with whatever I'm using. But I, I also try yeah. to use, say, say I'm using millies or something, millies are, millies are wet. I put a lot of salt in that and that helps it. <laughs> just chuck salt in there, yeah. Yeah, but it, you have to be you quick. Can, you can even just put, you can just put salt in a small PVA mesh bag and that, that'll also work. That's true, especially certain times of year when the carp are wanting those minerals. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll go for that. Um, Especially just before spawn time, they do like some some salt. Yeah. They try and get some saline in them. A lot of people fish the vol, eh? We've got another question about the vol saying bottom fishing or float fishing on the vol. I'd say bottom. Bottom. I've never seen fish come up at the top. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah. Okay, and then last question for the for our little episode. Um Top five venues that you don't mind everyone knowing about. Okay. So Homestead has to be one because that's where I, where I learned specimen fishing on. I crowned my teeth, you could say. Um, so Homestead, Middle Lake, Ebenezer, Aqua Paradiso, even though I've only been there twice. And lastly, any park lake. Park Lake, nice. Yeah, mine. I'd say. And yours? I'd say if you want a bit, if you want to learn specimen the hard way, I'd say Emmerich Dam or Bersach. Those will teach you quite nicely. Um, I'd say Lone Hill Dam's great for if you just want to go catch fish. You don't care what it is, barbel or carp. It's a nice place to go. If you want to be a specimen guy and catch fish over ten kilos all the time or over eight kilos all the time, I go to Laurentia. They've got an average carp weight of 10 kilos now. They've been working very hard on that. And then I'd say it's between fun fishing and, and red flay, as in red flay in the south and yeah, red flay <laughs> in Pretoria, because they both got very different things, and I love them both for different reasons. Red, okay. uh, south red flay fun fishing They've got that little pond, which is the tiniest little dam you've ever seen. But it's, it's a hell, yeah, it's a great place. But it's a hell of a challenge to catch. It's not easy to catch there, which is great. But then if you go Ritflay in Pretoria, you've got this vast expanse of land, and you've got to find a <laughs> fair yes. water, and you've got to find them. Okay, cool. I think that's that for this episode and live there video. A question from Bruno. Okay, there's a question. If if lockdown is finished, yeah, what? What's your opinion? Would you bait lots or, or not? How would you approach me after lockdown? Which venue? Which venue, Bruno? Because if I went to... Well, my, if I went to... My um, thing would be... I would, yeah. Same. Yeah, I the same. I won't change my approach. It's the same. That's true. I'd fish the same. What, depending on the venue, I'd fish the same as mm. you always fish. Do what you know works. Um, exactly. Okay, so we've got one more. Why do people avoid places like Rudderplatte? It's a hard place to fish, but it holds some awesome fish. I used to row at Rudderplatte for years. I was one of those rowers going past getting <laughs> bloody tired, racing hundreds of races a day. It was hectic. I don't know why people don't go to Rudderplatte. Maybe is yeah, that, that's actually yeah. One of the, the first places I caught a bigger fish on specimen was like six kilos. Is it? With my single tiger nut with my 08 hook. Yes, I've seen um, some but monsters there's, there. There's, there's too many, once again, too many small fish. So just the, the, the odds of get, catching a big one is very low. Um, I spent a shit ton of time there, like a lot of time. And we used to see flipping monster, monster fish and we used to hit them with a boat sometimes, and they were massive sure. fish, but what's the water hyacinth like? Because that's what stopped us rowing there. It's mm. the same as Harties. It's the same plant that just covers the entire water spans, and everything gets covered up, and then your lines get caught in it, and it's a big stuff up. So I don't know. That's 
that's why I haven't gone all the way out there because I don't want to drive for an hour and a bit <laughs> just to see AstroTurf on the water. Yeah. Um, and it ruins your whole weekend. Yeah, it can, it can really ruin it. Okay, so how would you approach fishing with hyacinth in the water? What would you do? Uh, my mirror PV actually comes from, from Hartis. And that was when the hyacinth was, was bad. Mm. So I actually took lines out. By the time the, the rod went, the whole swim in front of me was covered with hyacinths. So all I did was I, I backed it at my rod tips. And the, the hyacinth didn't pick up any lines. But the problem was when that fish went, I sat in the back of the boat. And I had another guy on the front of the boat breaking the line out of the weeds. Trying to, and mm. It takes forever. That's a mission. So uh, I would say check the weather. If if you know the hyacinths are going to be in your swim, don't do it. Yeah. Because you're running out of time. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, man. Wonderful. We're going to do some sessions together. Yes. Do a video. Cannot do wait. A video soon. Thanks so <laughs> much. And have a wonderful day. And Bye, thank man. you for everyone who watched. Thank you for staying yes, with us. Yes, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Cheers, bud. Bye. Cheers, man. Bye.